Welcome back to the Morning Brief. Time now for top stories, starting with the 10th anniversary of the Chibok abduction. On Sunday, the 14th of April in Chibok, it was more of mixed feelings as former abductees, parents and relatives gathered at the multipurpose hall of the school to pray for the safe return of the remaining 92 girls. At the interfaith service of prayers, speakers expressed mixed reactions following the turnout of events since 2014. Most of the speakers want to know why the remaining Chibok girls are yet to be rescued while those captured after them have regained their freedom. A lot of girls have been adopted in this country, you know. But why our own is so exceptional? Up to these days, we are still having a lot of them missing. That's what makes us so much annoyed because of uh, uh, government give a series of promise that they will get these girls out. There are so many efforts that my local government uh, are, are doing to see that these girls are released. So many times we had security meetings, we, 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 we challenge the elites. We give them information. When the, the, uh, the incident happened at that 14th April, in fact, we were all shocked. And even though we are still waiting to see how uh, the government and the, even the, those that can help to see that this uh, almost 10 years we didn't see our daughter, we are still uh, praying for Allah to, you know, go around this, the, the issue to bring them back for us alive. I've been unhappy since I heard of our coming here and I've been praying that our children return so I can also rejoice with others. The structure of the school has been expanded more than before because currently we are having, in terms of every structure, we have enough. And uh, the, in terms of the student, the population of students is also increasing, unlike the time when the school resumed. So really, the structure of the school is now fully in operation, and students and teachers are also okay with the system at the, at the, at the place that is achievable. It's not, it's, not, it's not a boarding school. Uh, it, we are operating on a daily basis. Efforts are being made at various levels from the federal to the state, and especially in the military hierarchy to make sure that we do all within our powers to make sure that these girls are out. A difficult one for parents of the abducted girls there. Imagine if their daughters were 14 when they were kidnapped, they would be 24 now growing up without their daughters. We pray for the safe return continually of the remaining Chibok girls. More on security now. Three people have been killed after an army patrol vehicle crashed into a commercial tricycle in Bade local government area of Yobe State. An eyewitness told Channels Television that the accident which occurred at the popular Garin Alkali market also left eight people, including the driver of the tricycle and passengers with various degrees of injuries. The incident had sparked a protest by members of the Association of Commercial Tricycles in some locations, causing a gridlock on the main road leading to Gashua, headquarters of Badi local government area. The Nigerian army says it is launching an investigation into the alleged involvement of some of its personnel in the death of a hotel manager in Umwahia Abia State. A statement by the Director of Army Public Relations, Major General Oye Mawachuku, says the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Taurid Lagwaja, has ordered a comprehensive investigation to ascertain the facts and bring to book anyone found culpable while extending its condolences to the families of the deceased hotel manager, Mr. James Achimugu, and the Nigeria Air Force officer, Cadet Imano Chidebere. The Nigerian army assures the public that every effort will be made to ensure that justice is served. 
away from security matters. Now, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, says it has discovered other fraudulent dealings involving COVID-19 funds, World Bank loan, and the Abacha recovered loot at the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. The commission also denied reports that it has cleared some persons set to be involved in financial misappropriations at the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and Social Development. In a statement by the EFCC spokesperson, Dilio Yewali tagged setting the record straight on investigations of humanitarian ministry. The anti-graft agency maintains that investigations are still ongoing and the commission has so far recovered 32.7 billion naira and $445,000 from the ministry. The statement reads in part, Discrete investigations by the EFCC have opened other fraudulent dealings involving COVID-19 funds, the World Bank loan, a batch of recovered loot released to the ministry by the federal government to execute its poverty alleviation mandate. And to politics now, the governor of Ondo State, Mr. Lucky Ayedatiwa, is not mincing words about his aspirations for re-election and has asserted that there is no vacancy to be filled at the Alagbaka government house. The governor, who was speaking during a tour of local government areas in the state, ahead of his party's governorship primary, says he has all it takes to step into the shoes of his late boss, Uluru Timi Akiridulu. Governor Ayedatiwa, who says he will build on the reforms brought into governance by the late governor, also expressed optimism that he will clinch the party's ticket at the primary. I've never seen this kind of love and support, but since this is the second local government, I'm sure other local government will repeat the same thing. I represented here unit leaders and men the women, the men, the youth, all of them are here to receive me, to play their support. Before now, about a month and a half ago, they did a similar thing by mobilizing themselves to endorse me to continue as governor of Ondo State. But today they've all come out on this local government tour to express the same openly. More politics now, and this time it's in Edo State, where a two-term former member of the Senate representing Edo South Senatorial District has switched allegiance from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress ahead of the Edo 2024 governorship election. Top leaders of the party, including Senator Adams Oshomole and the party's state executive who were on ground to welcome Senator Urogide back into the party, acknowledged his weight in the political arena. The former chairman, Public Accounts Committee in the Senate was at the event, handed the responsibility of heading the party's campaign organization for the September 21 governorship election. I'm coming back to the APC today after 13 years and three months of sojourn in the PDP. The APC as ACD, as AC, as ACN, I'm very proud to say that I'm a foundation member of this party. But today, the good Lord and our able party leaders so have decided to come back to the fold of mature politicians. I want to say that my decision to come back is to come and help build this party. I help enthrone Monday Opevolo and Dennis Idaos as governor and deputy governor. I will begin by apologizing publicly here and now. State Chairman, I have personal apology to make to distinguished Senator Matthew Orohidi. There is nothing shameful about making mistakes. It only becomes shameful if you have arrogance such that you are unable to own up, own up to your mistake. Now, why am I apologizing? By the time I was sworn in as the governor of this state, we realized that we must keep the promises that we made. Unfortunately, like every human, I think the devil played his part. And I was misadvised. I am not going to blame those who misadvised me, but I accept the responsibility that I took the decision to support 
Kuzameri. And uh, when I did, I later realized it. The latest of power of blessed memory told me, my son, you've made a mistake. To other stories now, practitioners in the aviation sector who have been dodging their requisite trainings and certifications and thereby putting the flying public at risk have drawn the ire of the federal government. And this is as the Minister of Aviation, Mr. Festus Keyamu, says government is set to arrest and prosecute such aviation personnel. Mr. Keyamu told Channel's television that the federal government has obtained credible information about such people and will not hesitate to go after them. People now come and take license from us to say, I have just bought a private, a, a private jet. I want to be using it for my business or to fly my friends and my family. I will give them very low fee, pay this. The moment you give them, they are carrying passengers all over Nigeria, mm. doing six or eight flights a day. And nobody's checking them. Before I came, nobody. This is a notice to them on camera. It's a notice. I am coming for them. I am coming for them because the president has given us marching orders. We're not going to allow this to happen. First of all, in terms of the regulation, tra you know, tracking them, making sure passengers are safe that you carry, regulating them and all that is low. Secondly, you are cheating the federal government. It's economic sabotage. It's economic sabotage. And I'm not going to allow that to happen. So people who are even my friends or friends of Mr. President or friends, we are going to come hard on all of them. And perhaps ground all their planes withdraw their licenses, come very hard on them. We're not going to allow that to happen. And I'm about to do something on that. And guess what? I'm tying it down to the issue of training and retraining because it is in most of these private aircraft you now see those people who are not gone for their normal routine training. They are the ones flying them. And we have complicity within the system. People who are supposed to check them, who are supposed to carry out sting, op sting operations on them, they are actually as their pot of soup. The Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, has asked President Bola Tinubu to direct appropriate ministers, ministries, departments and agencies to provide the organization with copies of the loan agreements obtained by the government of former presidents Ulusha Gwabasonjo, Umar Musa Eredua, Goodluck Jonathan and Muhammadu Buhari. Serap is also seeking the spending details of any such loans, as well as the interest and other payments so far made on the loans. The organization wants the president to establish an independent audit on the spending of the loans obtained by the governments of the former presidents and make public the findings of any such audit. And now, outside our shores, senior administration officials from the White House have warned Israel, saying the U.S. will not participate in any retaliatory strikes on Iran. Over 300 drones and missiles were fired at Israel overnight, which Iran said was in response to an April 1st strike on its consulate in Syria. Almost all weapons were shot down by Israel. It U.S. and allied forces before they reached their targets. Speaking to reporters on Sunday, a senior administration official said Mr. Biden told Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to think very carefully and strategically about how his forces reply to the unprecedented action that the first direct attack by Iran on the country. And in sports, Bayern Leverkusen lifted the Bundesliga title for the first time in their 120-year history on Sunday. A 5-0 victory over Werder Bremen, breaking Bayern Munich's 11-year stranglehold on the German top, light, top flight. Zabi Alonso's Leverkusen new victory would secure the title with five games to spare, but there were no signs of nerves in a dominant performance. A hat-trick from Florian Witz and goals from Victor Boniface and Granite Zaka extended their unbeaten run to a stunning 43 games in all competitions. A hearty congratulations to Bayern Leverkusen. So what are some of your own thoughts to these big stories uh, making the headlines this morning, uh, be it the Oyo invasion, uh, the invasion of the Oyo government house, or even uh, the story from um, Israel following the continuing uh, Israel-Hamas war with the entry of Iran. Let's have some of your thoughts to these stories.